Hello YouTube, this is Chess Hero Stay MPK, so welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to continue troubleshooting uh, our Beagle Bone or our Raspberry Pi and we're going to be dealing with an issue that uh, it comes up a lot. Uh, how to, if we're working with OpenCV, we're working with motion detection and we're working with pattern recognition, we need a camera. And a lot of times that camera is attached to a beagle bone or to a raspberry pi so we need to produce video we either and we need to play that video so we either you stream that video or we can use vlc to play that video uh, on the beagle bone or we can or we have to use m player fmpeg there's many sometimes the uh, beagle bone and the raspberry pi if you don't configure it properly Sometimes the beagle bone from default, it has certain things not there. And there's a reason why they do it. I don't know why, at least the Raspberry Pi, they tell you that they're doing it. But the beagle bone sometimes, they don't tell you that these things are off limits. So it's for you to find out sometimes. And it takes a long, you know, it can be very frustrating and you can be pulling your hair for hours uh, on googling and without an answer so in order for you if you're in that uh, camp this video is for you most server issues when you uh, when you uh, have uh, problems playing video remotely have to deal with the x11 protocol most of them and if you don't know what that is, you can Google it. It's an X Windows system, and and I don't want to get into that. But if you want to Google it, Google it. That's why when every time you see me, when I use sudo minicom, it goes right in. But uh, I don't even know if I have a if I have a um, if I'm able to play video to Minicom, I haven't tried it. Well, I might do that in another video. But uh, I don't know if you noticed that one t every time I go SSH, it's SSH, I always put that X in there. And then I put my name, the username, and then I put uh, the um, IP address. The reason that I'm doing that is is asking for x11 for the x11 protocol to enable forwarding to let me uh, play video if I want to play video on the server remotely that's why I'm doing that command is there sometimes if you don't have the proper uh, permissions open and I'm gonna show you you might not have this file here and ls LA. this file right here it gets written like this is today um, the, the the clock is wrong it's 10 or 5 in the morning on july 4th uh, it's a holiday in the us so this is wrong but I, you can tell that it was just written a minute ago and if we check inside that authority file, this is what you're going to find. You're going to find some mumbo jumbo there, but it has to do with how I, it allow me, uh, how I enable, basically how I enable the X11 forwarding protocol. And if you, if you remember this um, MIT magic cookie here, if you use putty a lot, you're going to see that um, putty runs in Linux, by the way, also. It's not only on Windows. So you're going to see, if you have a good memory and you realize, if you go here to uh, enable the X11 protocol through putty, MIT Magic Cookie 1 is, is chosen. So normally this is what you do if you want to, if you're using Windows or uh, or whatever. 
you know, every time you use PuTTY and you want to make sure that X11 forwarding is is on, this is how you do it in PuTTY. But look at the it's MIT Magic Cookie 1. Well, it's the same thing. That's the same thing that you see it uh, written there. Is Oops, not that one. Exothery, and you see MIT Magic Cookie 1. So it has to do with permissions, right? F basically. But basically, you're going to have problems with that file. So the one way to do, one way to, um, um, I, I just closed my terminal. So one way to, to do it is, You're going to, if you're having X authority issues, a lot of times I delete that file and then I, I, I create another one, empty. And then on a terminal, you what you do is, and on a terminal, you, you add those commands. Copy, and just copy and paste them and just, it, another thing before I, I do this, in order for you to do everything that I'm doing, first of all, because you need to have X off uh, installed. You see it right there, the binary. If you don't have that, a lot of times you might not have it on, on your Beagle Bone by default. Uh, so make sure that you, you you just all you need to do is sudo uh, install and then you just install x auth x authority x auth like that and it will let you uh, uh, you know it will give you that binary when you run that binary all that binary does is is produce that file and and put stuff into that file. But most of the, a, lot, a lot of times, this is what is corrupted. So what you need to do is um, enter that command that I was telling you. So you just do x off and make sure that zero, that's that's where your display is going to be, is uh, you basically you're saying make sure the echo display uh, display zero is trusted. That's that's basically what you're doing. So you go, or or another way to say um, put put uh, this display, which is your default, uh, to be uh, in the trusted file. And once you enter that one, you go s off at, and then this is a lot of times what does the trick. And it develops random keys after you hit enter. I'm not going to hit enter because I don't want to mess with that. Because, like I said, it can become a nightmare. So you can add these host at this display and then develop a random key. And, uh, and that, this command a lot of times does the trick. So you can try that. And then after you enter that one, you can do X off list. And if he, if you have those, that means you're good. That means you solve your problems. If you're having, uh, because these are the, the uh, MIT magic cookies that I've shown you from, with their keys from, uh, and they change all the time, from uh, Putty, okay? So, but that if they have to do with the X11, forwarding protocol uh, and, uh, and and so that's most of the times this will solve your issues doing what I told you here sometimes it's even worse so sometimes you have to deal with another set of problems and it's this here so you need to go here CD and by the way this is all done uh, you have to do it on your host, and you have to do it on your remote server. I mean, there are certain things that you do on your remote server, 
and there are things that you do on your host. So here you're going to go here and you're going to find this guy right here, the sshd config file. And if we open it, this is your ssh folder. It has the keys, the public keys and all that good stuff. So don't mess there or you can screw ssh. Uh, nano sshd config. And you need to open this one and you need to go down and keep going because you can see Kerberos, all your security um, and then you need to take the the uh, pound sign out of here and just make sure that you have X11 forwarding, yes X11 display offset 10 and X11 user local host to no that is on the server. On the host, make sure, so as you can see, this is just follow my my uh, instructions there. On your host, you need to open another terminal. And now this is the host. This is the server. And this is the host. So on the host computer, you need to make sure you also go to the same place, same file, and you go CD, ETC, SSH, and then nano. Make sure you use sudo or it won't let you save. And then go SSHD config. Well, it's not there. Oh, this is uh, the old one. So actually, nano sh config, and basically, it's, it's, there are two files: it's ssh config and sshd config. So all you need to do is where is it? Uh, hose forward agent i haven't even done it on this one so it's good that i it's good that i remember forward agent so just delete it and say yes because i just upgraded to uh, 18 or 1804 that's why and forwarding to yes And then you do that, and I, did I open with nano? I don't know. And no, I didn't, so I gotta go back and do it. No, and then open with sudo. And then do it again, because you need permissions for that, because that's your authority. So go back and do it again, forward agent. Yes. And four X eleven. Yes. And then four eleven and then control X, save this. And now if you on your host on your uh, server to test it, uh, you go echo display. This is of course after you're inside by using your your uh, X. Remember that. If not, if you don't do, if you don't go back inside with using X, it's not going to uh, work. I messed up here. So remember that. So now I'm just testing now. Echo display. And if it gives you a display, that means you're good. 
most of the time if before if if it, before it was fixed it will say uh, cannot open display so if it's giving you a display that means that you can use that to play your video and i cannot play a video right now because i'm i'm creating this this uh I'm creating this video and sometimes it will knock me out so if I try to play a video remotely so that's why I don't play one for you but another way to test it this is one way to test it another way to test it is sudo app get install x apps and these are a few apps that are really cool. Some of them are pretty nice. You can, if you don't have them, but there's one that will let you know. Uh, X apps, what is it? X app utils. This is good because this is how I test. Um, Had them on 1604. I don't know where they went. Uh, I don't want to use a, a repository. I want something quick and easy. Uh, uh, something. I, it's X app something. And something stupid. And I just cannot remember what it is. Uh, come on. This is to do the extra and all that stuff. But I don't want... This is actually... This is a very good stuff to do to your... Um, to customize your... Uh, I guess accepts must be part of one of these stuff. But I don't want to add too much stuff to my, uh, oh my god, I cannot believe I forgot how to do this. Exams from terminal. And it's done. Download is uh, install. I cannot believe that they don't have them. They have all the other apps, but this is just uh, simple apps. X apps, maybe that's what it is, X apps. Uh, let's try X apps. apps like that and that's the one. Oh no that's not it either uh, well if I, if I remember basically it's an app that is called X clock and if you see the clock that means that you are able to produce things uh, remotely so that's what I wanted to show you. I mean, uh, if you can see that clock, that's another way to test it. Uh, because I have X apps uh, already downloaded on my on my BeagleBone, but I wanted to show you uh, because it's, they have really cool apps and and you can test lots of things just through them. But that's that's uh, it's working, so we're good. I hope uh, you you can see the X clock, and that means uh, that we're good to go. So this is the end of this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, please click the like box, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time with another tutorial. Take care.